Let's talk about vaping for a second, because something massive happened today, huge news today, is that this federal government, of course, has waved their finger and, oh, this is a terrible thing and nobody should be vaping and anyone who vapes, blah, 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 smoking, smoking. Um, you've heard this how many times? This is an example of them uh, waving the finger. The vaping situation in Australia is an absolute crisis. Nine out of ten vaping stores uh, are deliberately located within walking distance of our schools. It is now the number one behavioural issue in our schools. We know there's a lot of pollution um, because of vaping. <laughs> My team's thrown that in. I hadn't seen that. That's hilarious. Um, and as a result of this new threat that was the, the new moral outrage, sure, let's legalise possession in the ACT for cocaine and for uh, ice and heroin, but you're vaping. Oh, dear goodness. So the government said, we're banning, right? It won't be available anywhere to buy. The only way to get it is if you go to your doctor first and even then it'll be hard to get a prescription. We have legislation before the Parliament today, which will be debated in the Senate when we go back to Canberra in a couple of weeks, that seeks to ban the sale and the supply of these products that are so obviously targeted to the youngest members of our community. That's why we're working to stamp out vaping. So, it'll be banned. We will get rid of this scourge. Not really. You see, for the thing to become... The rule it has to become a law for it to make its way through the parliament. They need the support of the Greens. So guess what got announced today, and hoping that you would be distracted by every other thing in the world other than this thing that is going to make vaping just as normal as it is right now. Instead, it'll actually become fully legalised. Today, the Health Minister pushes out a little statement, hoping nobody's going to notice. But what now is going to happen is that vapes will now be sold at your local chemist. Seriously, they're not banning it. You will need a doctor's prescription, but only until October. And then in October, you, if you're over 18, will be able to go in and just like the cold and flu stuff, you go into your local chemist and you buy the vape from them. Seriously. Now, whether this is a forerunner of how they're going to go when it comes to the sale of tobacco, we'll all wait and see together. But the idea that the chemist is the place where you are now going to be able to go and get your vapes, amazing. Now, let's have a look. Again, a part of this story that popped up today. The changes were pushed by the Greens, which will make nicotine-only vapes a pharmacist product. So none of the flavours of the apple this and the orange that and, you know, citrus fun time or whatever the heck it is that they do. And this is now going to work basically exactly the same way about your, your hardcore cold and flu. People will first have to talk to a pharmacist who will give them information on health harms and alternatives for quitting smoking. You have to then prove that you're over the age of 18, but that's it. Now, I don't know exactly what the rules are here about under what circumstances the chemist says no, but we continue. There will be limitations on the nicotine content and vapes will only be available in menthol, mint or tobacco flavour. Under-18s will, of course, be unable to access it unless they have a script. I'm not entirely sure which doctor is handing out to 17, 16-year-olds the prescription to vape. But something very big changed today. If you thought the weirdest thing that was available that is counter to the concept of your health was chocolate bars at your local chemist, get ready for vapes. Now, is it a better, more regulated system than, frankly, what is currently a black market that is openly operating in defiance of the rules? But what a change. These were the people who were out and about telling us, oh, we've hired a number of inspectors that are going tobacconist to tobacconist and double-checking what's available. Well, now you will be able to purchase a vape with the doctor's permission and then in October you've just got to turn up with your driver's licence, get a little, quick little lecture, but they, as I can see it, won't be able to say, no, sorry, you've ordered it too many times. And, of course, the reality is, is that if you have got it too many times from this place, they'll go somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. Can you buy one? Can you buy three? Who knows? Amazingly, there are people who support the idea 
that the best place for a tobacco replacement is the chemist. And it isn't the chemists. The Pharmacy Guild's been blowing up this afternoon, saying, hang on, what, 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 why do we have to get involved in this? And obviously, that also increases, let's be honest, the potential thefts that may well happen from places that are not as well guarded. Now, pharmacies, generally speaking, have got ways of shutting things down. But people literally break into tobacconists to get these type of products. Have a look at this. The Senate's expectation is that uh, the community pharmacies become vape retailers and vape garbage collectors is insulting. That's what the Pharmacy Guild says. Everyone wants to keep illegal vapes out of the kids of, uh, hands of kids and teenagers, but the Senate wants pharmacists to stock vapes next to children's Panadol, cold and flu medicine and emergency contraception. Now, for what it's worth, you know that I'm not going to pretend to be or hire the mighty on this. You know what I do with my spare time when it comes to cigars. Terrible, awful, shortening my own life, no question. So I don't have a problem with adults doing what they want to do to their body as long as it doesn't end up injuring other people. But what an insight into the potential future for our country. Is it the place that you will get your vapes as the chemist, maybe tobacco, your chemist? And then in places with much more liberal drug laws, what other things will your chemist eventually end up stocking? Now, this is a good idea because the ban clearly was not going to work, but it is a very bad idea in terms of the way it's going to be implemented. Now, this is because the Greens and Labor got together. The Greens know that younger voters are the ones who are using these products, so they don't want to be part of a ban, so they're going for a bit of harm minimisation. But mark my words, it is the Trojan horse for how things that have nothing to do with your health will end up being distributed in Australia. Watch this space. And as for the poor chemists who are now in a position where they don't want to stock it, they're going to have to stock it, and they're going to have to sell it. Albo's Australia. Well done.